and a very warm welcome to yet another episode of the We Talk Talent series. Those who have been following us know that the We Talk Talent series is a special initiative by the Economic Times HR World, where we unveil the latest trends surrounding the talent acquisition space. And I'm very excited to welcome today's guest with us, Mr. Kostub Joshi, talent acquisition leader with Emerson Group. Welcome, Kostub. Hello, pleasure is mine. Thank you. I will give a little introduction about Kostub. Uh, he comes with an 18 year of experience in HR and started his career as an HR journalist and worked towards a specialist in talent acquisition space. He has worked in multiple industries like IT, engineering services, technology, and product development. At Emerson, he is leading initiative and formulating strategies for hiring and onboarding technical talents to support the global ERND strategy for product innovation for Emerson businesses worldwide. So Costa, with your kind of experience and the background you come from, uh, we would like if you can share uh, some of your views on how the industry is going through the changes uh, in the recent past and how it has affected the workplace and the uh, setups that we used to uh, have and now. So if you can share a brief overview of that with us. Definitely, Priya. So, uh... Uh, last couple of years has been very topsy-turvy. I mean, the COVID-19 has uh, disrupted the way of working. The industries would function normally. Definitely, we also have been affected. Like all the other industries, we also have been affected. Uh, but like we say that work should go on, we have al also adapted to the new way of working, which is uh, what we call as hybrid working model. So we have a hybrid, uh, we drafted a hybrid policy to be in place is circulated to all people across the group, what hybrid policy would be, how that thing would work out. And uh, now we are full-fledged working in a hybrid model. So the model which we work is uh, similar to many industries which follow. It is uh, three days working from home and two days working from office. So that is how we keep uh, people engaged with us, people motivated and also expect people to contribute towards uh, working and growing the company and finishing the projects on time. Uh, of course, there are challenges which comes with uh, hybrid working policy as such, but then we adapt to the different demands of employees, different demands of the company policies and processes, as well as the customers whom we work with. So we are a shared services center of uh, Emerson, the innovation center where I work in. So our internal customers are our Emerson group uh, worldwide wherever they are based. So we have to keep in mind their demands, how things would come out, how the projects would be delivered. Then on the other hand, we have to look for our people, how they are comfortable in delivering the projects, working in the hybrid model, working from home or working from office, how they gel with each other, how they come together when the time permits and uh, take the project to the next level, how the communication channel flows uh, within the team right from the uh, top end that is the project manager or director to the last developer or tester who is working in that particular project. So all these things we have to keep uh, looking at at every uh, month, every quarter and see where, how are we leading, where are we lacking, is there any improvement in which we need to do, something we need to innovate, something we need to discontinue doing, introduce something new so that uh, people are motivated and uh, the company keeps on going and the work flow is complete. So that's how we try to adjust to the new way of working, as we call it, uh, in post-COVID times. Yeah, very rightly mentioned, Kosta, but it's like continuous process. True. Yeah, and since you have also mentioned that so many things have changed, uh, either it's the demand from the customers or the workplace demand. So it has also led to uh, some different kind of skill demands. And with that, I would like to ask my second question. So according to you and your industry demands, uh, what type of skill shortage do you think is causing the uh, OG talent war? Definitely. I mean, uh, we, we have uh, many sleepless nights. Since I uh, lead the talent acquisition function, me and my team always, you know, wonder where are we? Why are we in this place, first of all? Why we became a recruiter or why we are handling recruitments? You know, it's like, um, very difficult to work in current scenario. What has happened exactly is what we have understood from whatever profiles we are seeing or whatever candidates or whatever demand from the industry is. Post-COVID, there is a lot of uh, digitalization has happened in the industry and a lot of processes are automated. 
I mean, you can see it from um, your banking services, uh, your grocery shopping, your regular shopping, uh, education, everything has been automated. And there has been a larger demand of people who can work on uh, not only on the software side, but also on the hardware side as well. So there's a new breed of uh, people who have risen recently, which is yeah, which are your firmware engineers. So they do integration of software and hardware and so that the product can talk to each other, the machines or the uh, units which are involved, they can talk to each other depending on the programming and the coding. So everything has changed. Whenever we look at people, though we are predominantly a software development company, now we have switched our sides and looking at people who come from a hardware kind of a background or manufacturing or a product based background where they understand the product or the uh, uh, manufacturing process in detail and then integrate it through their software skills. So it has, you know, completely turned the hiring, which earlier we used to do in software industries, wherein we used to look for only core and niche skill sets. But now we have to look at combination of IT skills with firmware, with embedded and other uh, new technologies. So it's been a very, very difficult uh, period, but yes, uh, as the time is changing, we are also adapting to the new change and uh, fulfilling our uh, demands. Yeah, that has been, these times has been uh, really challenging for talent acquisition leader. I'm, I totally yes. agree with your point. And also connecting this question with the next question, since you also mentioned that there has been a lot of focus on new skills and how you're focusing more on combination skills. So uh, with that, I would like to ask you, how do you see the importance of soft skills evolving in the future? Since it has come into forefront, especially during the COVID. Of course, I mean, uh, soft skills have multiplied multiple times in the current scenario. Whatever you had or whatever you feel that you had, that soft skills are no more relevant. You have to come up with a high-end version of the skills which you already have or poses and you need to get trained for that because of this hybrid working or what we say the virtual way of working or online way of working uh, the skills soft skills are very much in demand so when you are sitting across a laptop and controlling a team you should have a lot of skills to be displayed you know right from your communication skills the way you communicate the way you engage the audience across the screen wherever they are look, sitting at if you are at a leadership level Leadership skills play a lot of importance in that. You have to hone your leadership skills to the highest level. You just cannot go and sit in front of the laptop if you are a project manager and you know start talking or controlling your team. You should have solid leadership skills and able to manage the team sitting across various locations through your laptop when you are working virtually. The third comes is empathy. You should have a lot of empathy to the people who are working from different locations. There might be some problems, uh, network problems or other issues. We have to manage that. We have to handle that because at the end, we need to get the work done, deliver as per the results and satisfy our end customers. So the soft skills have become so, so important in current uh, scenario. And I feel that still we have to uh, train a lot of people at junior as well as middle as well as senior level on high-end soft skills, particularly in your uh, communication, the way you behave on the screen, the way you deal with your people, the way you control your team, the way you control your projects as well as your customers. So there is still a lot of scope for uh, development of scope skills in all aspects of uh, your work and at all levels of uh, your hierarchy. Yeah, I totally agree. Thank you so much, Kostov, for sharing all those points. Um, with that, I would move to my last questions. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, pandemic has also given a lot of chances amid that we are mostly, there is this 50-50 between virtual and physical world. So it has yes. opened a new doorway, of gig, uh, doorway for the gig workers as well. That's so right. I would like to ask you what are some of the most prominent challenges in India uh, organization face to utilize gig economy at its pot potential? Right. So uh, it's a very valid question in recent times. And a uh, lot of companies still struggle, though the exception is startups, I would say. But traditional organizations, you know, still they would not rely on a gig worker to come and work with them. A couple of reasons for that. A is gig economy or gig working style is still not developed in India. 
people or the industry people still look at uh, gig workers at uh, kind of uh, not so prepared for the job or not so qualified for the job or they would hire for a low end kind of jobs for gig workers whereas uh, there is a wealth of talent available in gig workers i mean in one of my organizations we used to take uh, retired people from uh, psus or high end engineering and it companies to work as consultants but then again not many people uh, do that not many industries are still open to uh, employ gig workers uh, there are also certain setbacks in terms of uh, your indian company laws wherein not many provisions are made for gig workers in terms of pay benefits etc so they would not prefer to hire gig workers on the other hand uh, people in india are still not okay to work as a contract or a short term employee with an organization of course uh, society plays a big part uh, in this not many people still are comfortable to uh, work as a gig worker or a short term worker or a temporary worker for a, a it company or a manufacturing or any other industry they would still look at a permanent role or permanent job or a full time employment with organizations so these factors combined make it difficult for industries as well as uh, people to come together gel together and work together and deliver the output what is required so it is still time when when we settle down and understand the importance of uh, gig workers start uh, employing them start giving them those uh, values start giving them the perks and benefits which they should enjoy being a gig worker because they have wealth of knowledge with them if you see many people coming and working as gig workers in many of the organizations which i know about like i said exception was startup so many of the startups they employ gig workers and they are doing wonderful jobs they are doing lot of new things and enhancing the way of working of the startups and taking it to the next level so the other companies should also follow suit and give uh, uh, value to the gig workers other hand also gig worker should feel that they are also welcomed in the organization and uh, they are also part of the regular workforce and can contribute yeah i totally agree the sense of belonging is the most important thing uh, to work for an yes. organization thank you so much kartik yeah. for uh, being here today and sharing all your insights with us thank you priya it was my pleasure interacting with you thank you very much thank you audience this is it for this episode and we will meet you the next time thank you Thank <music> you.